Hello there, Geminis. So I've got two interesting images for you guys. First of all, um, I see this bowl. It's a pretty big bowl and it's filled with water, like filled all the way to the brim. And it's got a very curved base. So whatever it's resting on, it's not very stable, like it wobbles. And at the slightest touch, it could tip over. Okay, so I feel like uh, there's water contained in it. It's resting on a table, what looks like it's in the kitchen. And so if somebody shakes the table and you see people coming in and out, but the, the, the focal point is the bowl. You see people passing by, some of them touch the table, they grab things off the table, they wall, like shake the table. And so I see it kind of like moving back and forth and then the droplets of water spilling out from either side, mainly because it's not resting in a stable way and especially the, the base is not, you know, at a, um, the base is just curved so it, it's, it's prone to fluctuate back and forth. So when I saw this image, I was thinking, um, about moderation okay doing things in a very moderate way and the water always stands for emotion so it's sort of like too fast too soon everything is 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 um it's like there's a very delicate balance and you really can't you're you're not at liberty i feel to tip the scale one way or the other because the water is going to pour out completely and I also feel like, you know, doing things in a, a emotionally a balanced way and with emotional moderation and with a lot more purpose. So there is a situation here you have to handle with kitty gloves. You are also forced to, I feel, reveal a little bit of yourself, like your emotional self in a more delicate, balanced way and especially doing it with a lot of moderation okay so that's very very pivotal um the word pivot as well you know things are pivoting it's like a very pivotal moment in time and you have to be really measured with the way in which you conduct yourself and with the things that you're doing okay so that's um those are the messages from that first image the second image is a little bit odd so i see this man he's in a tuxedo and um, he's getting married and he's walking his bride up the stairs to where the magistrate is and she's um she's got like a white veil like spanish lace white veil over her face so he's not able to see her face and they go through the whole you know wedding uh, ceremony spiel and then it gets to that moment where he lifts up the veil and underneath i see this woman she's really really attractive she has black hair um, seems like she has a mole on her face, like a very small mole like near her lip or below her lip, I can't re recall. But he looks at her as if he's looking at her for the very, very first time and he's smiling and he goes, hello, what's your name? So I thought that was weird. It's like you're walking up the altar agreeing to marry this person and yet you don't know their name. Or like um, he's just, you know, maybe it's an arranged type of a marriage and he hasn't met her before. But I feel like there might be a person showing a side of themselves that you don't recognize. Or there could be a contractual agreement that you have agreed to and the terms are changing. Okay, so either way, I feel like it could pivot. Uh, to your favor or it could pivot in a way where it might be detrimental so the way that you approach situations I feel like everything is very much up in the air and you're not in a position here to make reckless decisions so I feel like there's a lot of there might be a lot of uncertainty that you're dealing with for this month and especially the latter part of April where things are a little bit muddled where everything's a little bit hazy. It's almost like that veil. You're looking through the veil and everything is not as uh, what they seem. Things are not as they seem. And especially, you might have to revisit a few contractual agreements that you've made with other people. You might have to revisit a few situations that you thought have been already been planned out, mapped out, decided upon. And you might have to revisit those decisions. If these decisions have been made in the Mercury retrograde period last month in March, 
And the Mercury retrograde period ran from March, I believe March 5th until March 23rd. If those decisions were already made, I, I feel like there's a need to revisit. There's a need to kind of like, you know, um, move things around, tweak things to make sure that they are to your liking. Okay. So I feel like a lot of major decisions are resting on the latter part of this month. And it's important for us to come into the situation and not be starry eyed and be really, really sure what we are getting ourselves into and be really, really sure that this is the person that we want. This is the situation that we want. And this is the agreed upon contract that we are signing. So be, be a little bit careful. Things are not what they seem. Okay, so I pulled out these two cards because we have the Seven of Swords. I'm going to talk about them in a little bit. So, I usually look at the energies that are, you know, um, prominent in the middle of the spread. So we have here an air sign, an Aquarius, Gemini, Libra. And we have here the Queen of Swords. And we have as well the Ten of Wands. So, what I'm seeing is responsibilities things that you have to do all the practical considerations you know all, all the the things that you have to do in order to maintain uh, work maintain you know your work-life balance maintain all the things and all the people and making sure everything is in its rightful place there's a lot of that a lot of like moving back and forth moving heavy items heavy lifting as well as making sure that things are and people are where they're supposed to be okay so I, I see you almost in like crisis management mode, you know, having to put out fires, having to deal with things, having to resolve issues. And I also feel like many of you are in a position where you're putting in a lot of extra work, uh, working overtime, working on the weekends, um, working on call, like working on an on-call basis. And especially if you are in a higher management position, being called in outside of work hours because of things that just need to be done behind the scenes. So I'm feeling like, you know, this is burning the midnight oil, working at night, uh, conjuring things, um, fixing things, making sure that everything is going according to plan, working especially behind the scenes where no one is really seeing you and you're still there working. So. It's not going to be, you know, an easy break. I feel like, you know, a lot of tasks and responsibilities um, are really, really mounting, okay? On the other hand, we do have here your energy, Queen of Swords, and this can be male or female, whoever, uh, whatever gender you are watching this. So Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra, but this is pretty much the saving grace, okay? This is like being able to see through a situation. This is somebody who thinks very, very rationally and very, very logically. So I feel like, you know, no matter what's happening around you, you're very, very much in control and you've maintained your center of gravity. Okay, so hence pivoting, um, being versatile, being um, able to, you know, switch gears, wearing many hats and being able to kind of like adapt for example, if this solution works in this uh, for this problem, it doesn't mean that it can be, you know, um, it can be transposed to resolve another issue. So I feel like you're very, very adaptable and your mind thinks really, really fast because the air energy deals with mental processes, communication, and especially being able to resolve issue, being able to, you know, strategize and to be able to see the fastest solution to a problem so I feel like there's a lot of problem solving happening in your environment and I feel like this is the arena where a lot of Gemini's people thrive okay you like a little bit of organized chaos because it allows you to display your skills your fast moving skills your troubleshooting skills your ability to diffuse situation and your ability as well to not let situations escalate so I feel like you're in a really powerful position, but I also feel like I'm drawn to this globe here, whatever it is that she's standing on, and it's also curved. So I feel like, you know, having that sense of, um, having that sense of balance is really going to work in your favor, okay? Um, so, so that's 
the first thing that I'm, I'm getting. If you are dealing with an air sign, so if you're dealing with another air sign, Aquarius, Gemini, or Libra, this is somebody who has very, very, who, who's very multifaceted. And this is what I was getting with that wedding imagery. It's like um, nothing is, um, it, it seems to me like things are not what they seem. There's a lot more behind the surface. So if you can look at her face, okay, she's like almost like split personality, almost somebody who's, um, has two sides to the story. Somebody who might be leading a double life. Somebody who might be just kind of like, um, there's a lot more than meets the eye, okay? And I also feel like there's somebody who's very, very versatile. You could be dealing with someone like this, or this is your energy that the versatility is coming out. And of course, you're a mutable sign. So you're able to wear many hats. You're able to play many characters. You're able to, you know, apply a lot of disparate skills in order to resolve something. So I feel like this person likewise is also somebody who has a lot of skills, who has honed in on a lot of skills, who has mastered a lot of skills. And so they're looking at this, not so much as, oh no, I don't wanna be in this situation where I'm inundated with a lot of things and a lot of responsibilities. They look at this and they're like, that's a worthy challenge. That's something I want to do, mainly because it seems like it's not mundane and boring. It seems like there's enough to do there. I want to be there. So you're looking at a situation and you're just like, that doesn't seem like, you know, um, insurmountable. That doesn't seem daunting to me. It might seem daunting to other people, but I'm willing and ready and able to take on this challenge. So you're definitely in kind of like um, in an, an offensive stance where you want to tackle something head on and you see it as a challenge and you see somebody as like a worthy opponent okay and I feel like it's very positive it's not adversarial it seems to me like this is something that you would be more than honored to take on so for some of you this might be coming out in your work environment where somebody is giving you a project and it requires a lot of coordination with other people. The three of coins, this is sort of like working together to build something of greater value. All the pieces make up the whole. Everybody has their own designated responsibilities and roles in a situation, but everybody has to bring their best and everyone has to communicate and share in order to get like all the, the, the cogs in the machine has to work together in order to get the big machine up and running. And I feel like there's a lot of collaboration. There's a lot of idea sharing, sharing ideas, best practices, best way to do things, best solutions. So you're in a position where you're heavily collaborating and heavily exchanging ideas and things with another person. And I also feel like I see this as many of you spending a lot of extra time outside of the work environment because you want to bring your best you want to bring your a game and so if you're dealing with people that are very very intelligent for example you're working behind the scenes burning the midnight night oil trying to brush up on some of these topics trying to brush up on you know your knowledge trying to learn things trying to um i'm seeing like if it's like a new area that uh, if, if it's like a new topic that you haven't really mastered you're brushing up on it so that when you come to them and you guys have this meeting that you're not going to be caught unaware so I see you doing a lot of work behind the scenes mainly because you don't want to seem like you don't know what you're talking about you you're really brushing up you're really like learning things and you're like devoting a lot of extra time so you're dealing with some really powerful people that I, I'm sensing. They might be really knowledgeable. They might be experts. They might have a lot of education under their belt, a lot of work experience, a lot of life experience. And you know, like I said, everyone is coming in together, bringing their own peace. And so you feel like I'm seeing heavy energy here about needing to make um, like do presentations, needing to be on center stage, needing to share your ideas. And you want to make sure that you know everything in and out. That way, 
when you get up there and they're asking you questions, you don't get flustered. You will have the answer to their question. So I see you guys going above and beyond your call of duty in order to make sure the situation gets off the ground in a really fruitful way, which is very good. Um, I pulled out here. So what we have here, the first card out of the deck, we have the Seven of Swords. And the Seven of Swords is like sneaky behavior, okay? sneakiness when it comes to somebody's actions or somebody's um, words okay so somebody is like working behind the scenes not revealing a lot of themselves um, there might also be it's linked up with the justice card and this is heavily about legal contracts legal obligations um, terms of contract so like I said you know the, the, the people in that wedding walking up to the altar with somebody that you thought was somebody else and then um, lifting up the veil and then have it be different. Like ha having the, the person be a different person or it's the situation that you thought would, would go one way and then it's going a different way. So there's definitely legal contractual agreements where somebody might be reneging on their responsibilities or it's a situation where things are up for interpretation or misinterpretation. Things are um, like written out, but it's not written in stone. So it, it doesn't really serve as a solid, stable guideline to go by. So you kind of have to bend the rules a little bit. So I definitely see somebody who's either a rule breaker or like a rule bender, and they don't really follow the herd. And I feel like they make the situation fit their circumstance okay so you're dealing with someone who might be a little bit sneaky or there might be some sort of a legal arrangement or legal obligation where the rules are very very flexible and I'm, I'm seeing loopholes so there's definitely a lot of legal maneuvering that's happening here and I feel like you know things are not as they seem so if you're signing any type of contracts okay just be very very careful read the fine print if you are linked up with somebody in a contractual way like a business partner uh, a work contract or if you're hiring people like contractors I'm hearing contract 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 so subcontractors contractors or dealing with legal paperwork you want to make sure that things are clearly spelled out ask all of the questions that you need to ask and especially do your research prior to meeting with whoever it is that you're signing these contracts with so that you're not stuck in a contractual agreement that you don't want to be in we have here the devil and the devil is what keeps us really really stuck this is like the the puppet master okay um he or she pulls strings behind the scenes so what you see is not what you get what you see is the puppet, but you're not really seeing the person behind the scenes manipulating the puppet. So I, I feel like there's an element of manipulation here. And I, I feel there's an element of somebody bending something, bending the truth, bending a situation in their favor. And it's, it's a little bit sneaky. So I pulled out two cards here for the Seven of Swords. And um, I feel like this is happening in your work environment. We have here the page of coins. This is the pentacles suit, which deals heavily with, you know, money, finances, obligations, and like the, the practical responsibilities. And especially when it comes to learning, when it comes to training, because this is somebody who's like still, they, they haven't mastered their skills yet. They're trying to learn, they're trying to, um, attain knowledge they're trying to chase you know the uh, the career ladder okay so it's somebody who's starting out on that first rung of the career ladder but either way this is a, a workplace situation where there are a lot of contracts that you need to sign and you need to make sure um don't jump into it like you know um don't brush into it don't be impulsive about it take your time to really read what you have to read take your time to mull it over sleep on it and then see how you feel the next day because i feel like there's something here with the hermit card shining light on a situation this is something that you have to be a little bit careful about and this is something that i feel like your guides are telling you you know shine a light on the situation um 
really try to figure out what's happening and really try to figure out what's happening behind the scenes. You know, look at the action rather than the words, okay? Look at the action. Um, if you are dealing with an earth sign, a Taurus, a Virgo, or a Capricorn, and in particular, if you're dealing with a Capricorn, um, I feel like you're catching something that they're doing that you don't really like. You're catching them, you know, committing, like they're, they're, they say they're here and then they're not really there. Or they say they're doing this and they're doing something else. Or they're like, um, I, I'm seeing somebody who might be misunderstanding things. So like they, they, they take an idea and they run with it, but the idea has a lot of plot holes. Or they decided on a course of action and it doesn't really meet that common sense test and still they decide to run with it. So I feel almost like you have to lasso this person back and tell them what they're doing wrong. So I feel like there's a lot of monitoring that you're doing and you're catching people make all these mistakes. You're catching people be sneaky. You're catching people like um, behaving in a way where it's very self-serving and you have to call them out on it. You have to tell them, you know, don't cut corners. You know, don't try to make off with your uh, your loot. Do things the right way, even though it's hard. You have to do it the proper way. You have to do it the um, the legally sufficient way. So I, I, I definitely feel like you're gonna be in a position where you have to, you know, have these difficult conversations with other people and you have to tell them, you're doing it the wrong way, redo it. And, um, you know, that's not going to make you popular, okay? So just a heads up, do it right, do it once and do it right. So that goes for the people that you're monitoring or watching, but that also goes for you. Tell them to do it the right way. And I feel like you really can't mince words, you have to be really, forward and you have to be really forward and you have to be really um I, I feel like very trite when it comes to disciplining them or chastising them for whatever it is that they're doing because once again we're building towards the greater good right we're trying to build a stable foundation and if we're not if we're letting these things and these sneaky characters slip under the radar in the greater scheme of things, everything that we're trying to build would be for naught. So I feel like you kind of have to be very, very clear about what your expectations are, but at the same time, um, there's no room for, for sugarcoating. Okay, there's no room for telling somebody you did a good job when they did not do a good job, or you did it, did it the right way when they've been cutting corners. So it's really important to do things properly, do it once and do it right. So that's what the first six cards represent to me. And um, the rest of the cards basically means how you approach this is going to determine the outcome for the last two weeks of April, okay? And that seems very deterministic, but basically what it's saying is, once again, you're pivoting, okay? Which side are you pivoting towards? And I feel like, you know, you have a lot of control here, so that's the, the saving grace. Like, you can pivot to this side where their sneaky behavior goes unaddressed, or you can be the person who is not as popular who people are up against. So this is like the villagers, you know, with the pitchforks going after somebody. It's almost like the, um, it's almost like whoever's in the limelight, whenever good things happen, they get to, you know, kind of like bask in the glory. But when things go awry, they're the ones that have to face the consequences. So I'm feeling like this is a situation where you can't be delicate. You have to do things right. And you have to take the path even though it is not as popular, even though it's not going to win you that popularity contest, even though it's going to single you out for, you know, um, anger from other people, the wrath coming through from other people. But you have to stick to your moral compass and try to do things the right way. And so I'm feeling here, your energy in the center is very appropriate, Gem Gemini, because I feel like you're pivoting, okay? 
Um, so moderation. A lot of the times, it's not so much what we say, but the tone and the matter in which we say it. And the best thing to do when you're, you know, reprimanding somebody or chastising somebody is not to do it in front of other people. And so I feel like there might be times throughout, you know, the the last two weeks where you might get upset. Okay, but I feel like. Whatever you need to say, it can wait, and especially it needs like it's more about finding the right environment,、uh, getting somebody alone so that you're not embarrassing them in front of their peers, or getting somebody alone so they're that they're not putting on airs with you or around you. They have nobody that they need to put on airs with, so that's when you can you know confront them or tell them or chastise them or reprimand them, whatever it is that you need to do. Or that's when you have the time to show them how to do things、um, the right way, and I feel like the the matter or the manner, excuse me, the manner in which you approach the situation is going to determine whether or not you know it's going to be successful. So this is a really powerful card, okay? And we have here the Justice card, moderation and balance. As well as the magician card, mastery, self mastery, mastering all the elements, handling a situation the right way, and taking a course of action, even though it's not a very popular course of action, but it will give you a lot more respect, and it will give you a lot more. I, I want to say, like it shows somebody who is very true to themselves. Who has stuck by their moral compass? Who is guided by their moral compass? And so, in exchange, they come out as a leader, right? It's not somebody who jumps on the bandwagon and is a yes man and says whatever it is that people want to hear. This is somebody who is not afraid to be different, and they're not afraid that other people might not understand or might not、um, embrace. Whatever idea, whatever you know, new insights they bring into the picture. But this is also somebody who stands out from the crowd, and you know they they beat to to their own drums, and they don't really care what people think of them. And then as a result of it, they have all the skills necessary to be a leader. So leadership qualities, I feel like, stands out really strongly here. And I feel like the cards are just, you know, coming in as a reminder for you to kind of like stand your ground, don't fluctuate, find your balance, don't be, you know,、um, don't overlook things that might be a cause for concern. Nip it in the bud so that you don't have to have, you know, those uncomfortable conversations later on when things really go wrong. And then at the same time, I feel like. Leadership positions are never easy. Okay, so it's sort of like this is really a test of your leadership, and this is really a test of whether or not you're able to stand your ground, whether or not you're able to take care of all these little pockets of things, responsibilities, people, and to make sure that you stay really stay on top of everything. So it's a. I feel like you're gonna come out on top either way. Okay, this is once again self mastery, mastering the self first before you can have control over other people and control over your your situation. And so, I see you being a little bit uncomfortable. I see you like in an、um, in a realm in a an. An environment that you're not going to feel, you're going to feel a little bit wobbly. You're not going to feel centered and and safe and and like、um, stable. And you're very very adaptable, Gemini. So I feel like this is not going to be a problem for you. Once you get yourself up there, once you're thrust in that environment, you're going to be able to use your ingenuity in order to make things work. Okay. So I'm not too concerned about that, but I definitely feel like it's really important for us to like you know be be firm and be very、uh, strict about what is acceptable and what is not. And I feel like once you set those parameters, you have to establish those guidelines and those parameters early on. And once you set it, 
make sure things are set in stone so that people don't try to, you know, push boundaries. Okay, so maintaining your boundaries with other people and being very, very um, objective if you are um, chastising somebody, reprimanding somebody, or teaching somebody how to do something, or telling somebody what not to do, be very, very objective. Dwell on what they did, like dwell on the actions, don't dwell on the person. Does that make sense? Um, give me just a moment. I feel like there's something else here that I'm not able to catch. I'm seeing like this this vine okay so it's like curled up and then it's it's like a time lapse of a, a vine that shoots out so it's like curled up into like a spiral and then it shoots out and then it un uncurls like it unfurls itself and then it becomes a straight leaf and I don't know what that means but um I think what it means is um, be a straight shooter I think what it means is, you know, don't hide things, like don't hide part of yourself or even like whatever it is that you're feeling, I feel like you need to kind of like give it a voice, okay? So I'm looking more into the relationship arena because I feel like most of this is work oriented, okay? So I feel like a lot of responsibilities will creep up, a lot of things that you have to take care of. And I feel for the, the last two weeks of the month, that, that seems like that's all it is. But I, I also feel like there's an energy here, the devil, and the devil is like um, entanglements and especially situations where there's a lot of restriction. You have a lot of restrictions that you're working under so i'm trying to see the other areas of your life and what's really happening we have here the four of cups and this is a card that deals heavily with a little bit of boredom okay um a situation where things are a little bit like routinized where things are like um very monotonous and it can feel very very boring and i i definitely feel you being in a situation where you kind of want to untether yourself you want a lot more freedom you want to like um, cut yourself from the the puppet master, okay? You want to be like working. It's it's like having some like okay. So the 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 leaf, the curled leaf, makes sense. It's like somebody is has got you like looped up or tied up around their fingers, and you don't like that. You want to be your own person who doesn't but you want to be your own person and you feel like this person has a lot of control a lot of sway over you and we are definitely breaking away from that okay we have here the five of cups which is a situation where whoever walks away you let them walk away and it's a situation as well there are two cups left and the two of cups deals with friendship it deals with soulmates it deals with uh, embarking on a new journey with somebody that is a lot more emotionally ready, available, and a lot more in alignment with you, okay? With the three cups knocked down, we have the two cups left over, and that's like a true soulmate connection. So I feel like there is a situation that you are very, very tied to or stuck in, and you're not really sure which direction to move, and it's really urging you to go with the new, because while you're ruminating over this, life is at a standstill two of wands lack of movement lack of momentum you're not able to traverse or you're not able to you know shift i'm sorry this is the three of wands you're not able to see your ships coming in okay so if we're in this situation and we feel almost like emotionally it's not really serving us and we're waiting for things to come into the picture and what's coming through we have here the ace of wands this is new projects new passion like a passionate new beginning that has a lot more prosperity and i do feel like the month of april is really coming strong for this card mainly because of you know the the spring energy okay so this is something that you definitely need to free yourself from 
in order for you to have that spark of passion or something else that's whatever is coming in your life okay so let me see here what's coming through for Gemini's okay so we have three cards in the reverse position I feel like you're not making a change because there's a lot of financial uh, entanglements and I also feel like you're not able to move away because you're not sure about your financial future. Everything that you have built up to this point, Queen of Coins as well as the Ten of Coins, this is like generational wealth, okay? This is um, things that are built up not overnight, built up over many, many, many years possibly over many many lifetimes so this this is definitely indicating to me some type of a karmic situation where you kind of have to you know go through the karma with another person and then as a result of it I feel like you know when it's a karmic relationship it really tests us and it really makes us you know um, decide on what we really value because when it's a karmic relationship, the other person will push all of your buttons. And it's just a matter of what you're willing to part ways with, what you're willing to, to compromise, and what you're not willing to compromise. If you look at the swords, one person has all the jewels and the other person is left with nothing. So I definitely feel there is a decision that hinges upon financial abundance, who's getting what, divvying up assets and things like that. And you're not at a point where you can really think about what your financial future is going to look like if you decide to extract yourself. So I feel like, you know, um, there's a lot riding on this decision. And I feel like that's one of the reasons why you're not able to um, implement some type of a move. And then I'm also feeling as well, um, this is really about you coming into yourself and taking the path not the path of least resistance okay this is somebody who is a trailblazer they don't care what people think so you're going to have to exhibit more of this energy i believe the beginning of the the month i did a reading and it says stop straddling the fence you have to make some big major executive decisions and these decisions are not going to be popular, but they need to be made mainly because you need to follow your moral compass on this. I'm just going to leave it at that, okay, Geminis? Um, I will be back in May for your birthday time, and um, I hope things are going well for you guys. Take care of yourself, and um, I'll talk to you guys soon. Oh, yes, I forgot. For those who are looking for a reader, I do have a link in the description box below. Her psychic, her name is Bridget. She is based out of California. Um, if you are in the California, Northern California area, she's also um, able to meet up, I believe, for a uh, face-to-face reading, if you'd like. But um, if you're looking for guidance, if you know someone who's looking for guidance, I highly recommend her. She's phenomenal. Um, she picks up information very, very fast. And uh, I've used her services before. I've recommended her to friends and family, and she's phenomenal. Um, so if you'd like to book a reading, the link is in the description box below. I will talk to you guys in about two weeks' time.